Hi, my name is Reem Badali and I'm a fourth year peer mentor in the general lab and today we're going to go over Pete's pump or syringe pump math. So we're going to do two different examples. One is a reconstitution and the other is more of your straightforward regular question that you'll see more often. So to start off, our first order is ondosterone, four milligrams IV syringe pump, um, and all this information we're going to need to find through our IV resource book. So this is a black book that's available in the lab and it has all the information that's going to sort of fill in the blanks that we have here. To figure out what your safe dose range is, you're going to have to do that research yourself. So look online to try and figure out the safe dose range for that particular medication. Um, I do want to give a warning that these numbers are just sort of made up. So these might not be accurate to orders that you might see in the real life world for these particular medications. So we're going to find our medication in the book and there are multiple entries of the same medication that I'm looking for. So this is Zofran. So I have one right over here and I have one right over here. Um, because we're giving it through a syringe pump, we need to make sure that we're looking at the syringe pump section. So under pump type, we're looking for SP for syringe pump. So we're using this row right over here. Now, you'll notice that there's different columns with different names. So we have vial concentration. This is what the vial of the medication is available as. Reconstitution solution. So for this, it comes as a liquid form. So we don't need to reconstitute it. It's not a powder. Um, instructions for dilution. So this is telling us um, what we need to add. Final concentration. Administration. So how long we're giving it over. And then the compatibility. So we're going to fill in our blanks now. So according to our IV resource book, the available or the vial concentration is four milligrams per milliliter. We can simplify this to be two milligrams per milliliter. Our final concentration was one milligram per milliliter. Our administration time was 15 minutes. Our rate we will calculate later and our safe dose range we figured out from our research. We're given the weight in the order, which is 50 kilograms. So to begin, we're going to calculate our safe dose range to do this, we're going to take the lower bound, which is 80 micrograms, and our upper bound, 100 micrograms, and we're going to multiply that by our weight. Now, since our safe dose range from our research was in micrograms, but our order is in milligrams, we're going to have to convert. So for our lower bound, we're going to start with our 80 micrograms per kilogram. We're going to multiply that by the conversion factor of 1,000. So 1,000 micrograms is equal to 1 milligram. And then we're going to multiply it by our weight, which is 50 kilograms. When we cancel out our units, we get 4 milligrams. For our upper bound, we're doing the same thing, just using 100 since that's the top number. So we're going to take 100 micrograms per kilogram per dose. We're going to multiply that by a conversion factor, 1 milligram per thousand micrograms. Multiply that by our weight again. And when our units cancel and we do the math, it is 5 milligrams. Now that we've done our calculation for our safe dose range, we know in this particular case, it's from 4 milligrams to 5 milligrams. We want to cross check this with the order to make sure that the order falls within this. If it is below or above, we need to question the order. This means we do not give the dose and we call the provider to get their opinion on what should happen. This might mean that they change the order or the, it may mean that we have to override it and we still give the dose anyways. But as a nurse, it is your responsibility to question orders when they do not fall within safe dose ranges. If it is a safe dose, then we can just proceed as usual. No need to consult the provider. Then we're going to calculate our total medication. So to do this, we're going to take our order and we're going to multiply it by what is available or what our vial concentration is. So our order is four milligrams and we're going to multiply that by two milligrams per milliliter. Since our order is in milligrams and we want the units to cancel, the unit that has the milligrams within our vial concentration, so the two, two milligrams is going to go on the bottom to be able to cancel. So we'll get a final calculation of four milligrams divided by two milligrams, which is two milliliters. That is our total medication. Then we're gonna calculate our total volume. So this is the amount of medication mixed with the diluent. To do this, we're going to take our order again, but this time we're gonna multiply it by our final concentration. So we're gonna get our four milligrams. Again, we're gonna take our unit that has the milligrams and place it on the bottom to cancel out, which is one milligram in this case over one milliliter, so four milligrams divided by one is four milliliters. So in total, we have four milliliters of both medication and diluent. Now, if we know that together, our diluent and our medication is four milliliters, we can easily reverse the equation to figure out how much diluent was added. 
So in total, we have four milliliters and we're gonna subtract the medication, so two milliliters, and that's how we get our diluent of two milliliters. So we took two milliliters of medication and we added two milliliters of diluent and we got four milliliters total. Now we're gonna calculate our rate. Now we're not just giving the diluent and we're not just giving the medication, we're giving a mixture. Just like when you are giving an IV medication and you have a mini bag and you inject some medication into it, you're not just giving that two milliliters of medication or that 100 mLs of normal saline, you're giving the mixture of both, so 102 milliliters total. In this case, our total volume is four milliliters, so that is going to be our total volume that we use. Now, rate is calculated in milliliters per hour, so that means our milliliters are going to be on the top, and our time measurement is going to be on the bottom. So there's two ways that you can calculate this. First, we can take our 15 minutes, and just um, if you know that 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour, you can convert that to a decimal right away. So you'd have four milliliters divided by 0 0.5 hours. Or you can do the conversion within your math. So we'd have four milliliters over 15 minutes, and then our conversion factor is there's 60 minutes in one hour. So we're gonna multiply that, making sure that the minutes go on the top since our 15 minutes was on the bottom. That way we can cancel the units and the math will give us 16 milliliters per hour. So that's how we figure out our rate. And we're gonna remember those numbers to be able to input them in our syringe pump when we actually do the programming. So for the second question, we're gonna do a reconstitution. So it's asking for vancomycin, 200 milligrams, IV syringe pump. So we're going to look for it in our IV resource sheet. Again, there's multiple entries. So I'm going to look at the syringe pump specifically. And I notice under reconstitution solution, instead of saying not applicable, it's telling me that I'm going to dilute with sterile water. So this, what this means is that my vancomycin is coming as a powder. I'm going to take some sterile water, draw it up in a vial, um, insert it into my, uh, draw it up in a syringe, sorry, and then insert that into my vial um, to, to create a solution. Then that solution is what I'm gonna draw up for my later dilution. So in this, it's telling me that I'm gonna have to take 10 mLs of sterile water. I'm gonna have to add it to that powder of 500 milligrams to create a final um, dilution of 50 milligrams per milliliter. Then afterwards, I'm gonna to have to draw up and create that final concentration, which is five milligrams per milliliter. So, for our available con uh, vial concentration, it told us that we're adding 10 um, milliliters of sterile water, but then it also tells us what the final concentration is gonna be. So it tells us that that concentration, once we add our reconstitution, is gonna be 50 milligrams per milliliter. So that was like our first step. Um, we also want to note that this comes in 500 milligrams and we're adding 10 mLs of sterile water. This is for us when we go to actually do the reconstitution. It's not gonna affect our math over here, but so that we know we're checking um, the vial to make sure that it says 500 milligrams and that we're pulling up 10 milliliters of sterile water to do that proper con reconstitution. My final concentration in the next column, it says that it's five milligrams per milliliter. My time, it tells me is 60 minutes. And my rate, I'm gonna calculate later. So first I'm gonna calculate my safe dose range. So I'm gonna take my lower bound first, which is three milligrams per kilogram, and I'm gonna multiply that by my weight, 50 kilograms. These cancel, and I get 150 milligrams for my lower bound. For my upper, same thing. I'm taking four milligrams per kilogram and multiplying it by my weight, 50 kilograms, and that gives me 200 milligrams. So my safe dose range is 150 to 200 milligrams. So I'm gonna go back to my order, 200 milligrams, and this falls within it, so it's a safe dose, I can proceed. So then I'm gonna to go to my next step and I'm gonna calculate my med. So again, I'm gonna take my order, 200 milligrams, multiply it by my available concentration, And I'm going to 
go ahead, I'm gonna cancel. And that gives me four milliliters. So I know I'm giving four milliliters of medication. Then I'm gonna proceed with my second step. I'm going to find my, final, my total volume. So again, take my order, 200 milligrams, multiply by my final concentration, five milligrams per milliliter, cancel out my units, and this is 40 milliliters. So now I have my total volume, I have my total med, I can subtract the two. So I'm gonna take my 40, subtract my four, and that gives me 36 milliliters of dilutant. I have all my numbers, I can calculate my rate. I'm giving a total of 40 milliliters of the solution, and I'm giving it over 60 minutes or one hour. Alternatively, you can convert 60 minutes into one hour. That gives us a rate of 40 milliliters per hour. So we're going to make sure that we record all these numbers because later when we input them into the pump we need to have them for reference and it's also a double check to make sure that we did our math correct. <laughs> 